Excellent. Right, first of all, good morning, everybody. Thank you very much for dragging yourselves out of bed this morning. Um, I think it's very reassuring what people will do for a free cup of coffee and a pastry. So um, <laughs> thank you very much. I'll try and make it interesting as well. A couple, couple of introductions to make. First of all, in the corner there, Martin, if you could make yourself known. This is Martin, our technical consultant, who will be, he is an acoustician, and he will be answering questions later. By contrast, I'm a marketing guy. I am not an acoustician. So you may be wondering what I'm doing standing here, giving this presentation, rather than Martin. Actually, that's a very good question. Why am I standing here doing this presentation? The, <laughs> This presentation is titled Acoustics for Dummies. And um, they looked around and wondered which was the biggest dummy in the company that could talk about acoustics. And put it into layman's terms, to give you an example, there are phrases when you use this presentation that are the pr phrases that an acoustician would use, but not necessarily what you'd search for in the internet. For example, um, the rooms, the booths on our stand and the one we're going to, hopefully assemble in 10 minutes. Um, we call them soundproof rooms. Now soundproof rooms to an acoustician is a meaningless term because to be completely soundproof, you would have to put the room in a vacuum. Now I'm sure some of you teachers may have some pupils you'd like to put into a vacuum to shut them up, but that as an acoustician's term is meaningless. However, as I explained to my technical colleagues, if you look at what people search for on the internet, people don't search for noise reduction rooms. In fact, on the last Google search we did, not one person last month searched for a noise reduction room, but thousands of people searched for soundproof room. So I'm here, if you like, to use the layman's language, but also the terms that an acoustician would use so that you can understand the differences between the two. So if you like, the presentation was prepared by a technical guy like Doctor Who, whilst I'm Doctor Who's assistant who is there, or perhaps you know, Sherlock Holmes and Doctor Watson. Well, the Watson character is there to try and explain what's happening in layman's terms. So we start off with who are Black Cat? Black Hat Music, Black Hat Acoustics, musicpracticerooms.com, or to our American friends, .com. We were founded in the 1980s as master distributors for Wenger Music Education Equipment. There are three parts of the business. There's, mu there's music practice rooms, which you see here, Black Hat Acoustics, which is what we're talking about today, and Black Hat Music, which distributes the flow products you'll see on our stand. Music stands, chairs, storage racks, that kind of thing. We are a friendly bunch, and most of the people that work in the business are not only mad about music, they're also keen players of music as well. So you're talking here to people that love their music. I'm gonna talk about four problems using the technical terms and using the layman's terms so you can understand where we're coming from and as I say more importantly what they mean because I'm going to be gesticulating can you hear me on this mic as well everybody cool to the screen I don't want to be so like tied here so we're going to talk about reverberant sound levels now that is the technical term. What you and I would call it would be echoes. So we need to know what's happening. Happening, happening. You're in a room, sounds bouncing around, you're getting echoes. So this is the official title of what's going on. So. Reflections occur due to hard surfaces which allow much of the generated sound pressure levels to propagate as reverberant sound. So, generated sound pressure, 
you could say the noise. Now, an acoustician would say, oh no, noise has got a technical term as well, but, but the sound is bouncing about, the noise is bouncing around. And a reverberant sound, we mean the echoes. So, here we have somebody playing a brass instrument in a gymnasium, lots of hard surfaces, and so the sound is bouncing around. That's the problem with a room like that. You'll get the same sort of effect, say, in a bathroom or in a swimming pool. Okay. Now, reverberant sound levels can be measured, and building regulations actually put down what the reverberation time should be in seconds. Now, you may wonder why swimming pools are on there. In a very, very bright atmosphere like a swimming pool, if you can imagine somebody's crying for help because they're drowning, it's important that the reverberation levels are not so much that you can't actually tell which direction it's coming from. That's why we even put down an ideal reverberation time for a swimming pool. The way the reverberation time is measured, it's the time taken for a generated sound to reduce by 60 decibels. How's that for a dummy? And these things are measured and then there is an ideal for various learning environments. So if you have a room which has got sound bouncing around and it's too echoey, what can you do? Someone like me might say, right, put carpet on the wall. You know, wall to wall, act minister, not just on the floor, on the walls as well. That would do the job, but it wouldn't be very, very practical. So what you do is you have absorptive open cell products such as acoustic panels. What are acoustic panels? They're like a Oh, and combined with diffusive products. The open cell products, really we're talking about something which is quite spongy. And these can be put on the wall and help absorb the sound. The diffusive products, um, you may have seen sort of foam products which look like upturned egg boxes. So I'll call those spiky. If you've seen an acoustic room where it looks like it's got egg boxes on the wall, what that's doing is that it's diffusing the sound whilst the open cell products are absorbing the sound. And these all together help reduce echoes. And so you might put a combination of these on the walls which would reduce the echoes. Now obviously on there they look like, uh, you know, why would you want purple panels over the wall? Here's an example of a job. As you see, lots of hard surfaces, got wooden floors, lots of glass. The echoes in this room were so bad that if you tried to play music in this room, it deafened everybody. Uh, the room was almost unusable. So, these panels on the ceiling turned it into a much, much more usable space. So there's an example of the reverberation time being tamed, if you will, by the use of closed open cell panels. Here's another problem. What if you can't understand the speech in a learning environment or you're hearing too much? So you've got someone there and just people can't hear it. Usually what's happening Oops. Sorry, I'll go back. It's back to the problems with echoes and high ambient noise. Now, if you just slip your headphones off for a second, the ambient noise at the moment is not too bad. As the day progresses with a lot more people playing pianos and things like that. But the ambient noise here is about 80 decibels. And you'll find that as the day progresses, that you're talking louder. And then you go into one of our 
acoustic booths. And you wonder why you're talking like this to everybody. And you wonder why at the end of the day your voice has got like this. You can put your headphones back on now. Because I don't want to keep on talking like that. So with a high ambient noise or and or lots of echoes, because very often it's both of these problems that are making speech unintelligible. Again, we need to find some solutions for these. Something other than that. Once again, we can use panels to reduce the, the reverberation times so that we're not getting so much echoing going on. Or we can actually create an atmosphere using an acoustic booth or a soundproof room, if you will, which will mean that suddenly I encourage everybody here to try out our acoustic booths, either this one here that we are hopefully going to put together in 10 minutes or on our stand and find suddenly that whilst you're outside and there's a lot of ambient noise going on, you're having to talk loudly and people are going, pardon? And then suddenly you're in this quieter environment and you can whisper and people can still hear you. So that is another solution. Another way to reduce the reverberation time is with the acoustic curtains. What we have here, as you can probably tell with the wooden floor, is a very, very echoey room, which can immediately be transformed by pulling across these acoustic curtains. Now the phrase acoustic curtains tends to confuse people. We have a lot of inquiries from people that live on a busy main road and they write to us and say, I need acoustic curtains to reduce the noise. Unfortunately, acoustic curtains don't actually reduce the noise. What they do is they reduce the reverberation time. So you can very quickly take something with a, which is a very bright, like a gymnasium, pull the curtains across and immediately the room becomes a quieter room. So that's acoustic curtains. So I'm very, very sorry to say that if you are living on a, a busy main road, that acoustic curtains are not going to suddenly make your room a quieter one. I can show you again the acoustic panels we used at this rugby club clubhouse. All of these things help reduce the ambient noise, reduce the reflective sound, the echoes, if you will, and make speech much more intelligible. What if you're on stage, you have a stage and you have people on stage and they can never be heard? You've got people playing acoustic instruments, you've got people singing, and the sound's not being heard. What's happening here? Well, very often, it's because the sound is going from the stage up into the fly loft, bouncing off at strange angles, not necessarily getting to the audience. So, what solutions can you have to that? Well, the rock and roll solution has always been to do something like this. Which is all well and good if you're playing with, I don't know, take your pick from Led Zeppelin to Foo Fighters, depending on age. That would be seen to be the opportunity. But there are other solutions. Because funnily enough, a string quartet played through that is not a great sound. So what you do is you need to focus the sound so that it's heard in the audience and that the sound is not disappearing. You can sometimes think of sound like water and unless you channel it or block it, it's going to find a way through, which is why we're using headphones today because with the high ambient noise, we would have to have even more noise coming out of the speakers, a bit like that stack of marshals, obviously not quite that extreme for a room this size to make them be heard. So that's why we're on headphones today. So, the solutions are to focus the sound so that it doesn't disappear off and reflect. This time you're creating a reflection, not trying to absorb it, you're trying to create it so you can focus the sound out into the audience. I've got here a short video 
And uh, I hope my technical guy in the corner is not going to deafen you with the music. But this is a acoustic shell which is being used in a big open arena to focus the sound and reflect the sound into the audience. Which are going to stop the sound disappearing off and reflect it back out and towards the audience. And then these other parts of the shell, this is quite a big one as you can tell, You're like forming a, 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 a space where the sound is going to be reflected and focused out towards the audience. Can you see that okay in the corner? You can sort of like lean over. So there you see, very, very attractive. And if you put an orchestra in there, then in this huge amphitheatre, it would be able to be heard. Here's another photo of a shell. Again, you can see we've got the panels at the top and the panels here. Here we have coral risers. So this is designed for coral, coral obviously. So that the voices, instead of being amplified, are being reflected out towards the audience and the voices are not disappearing. You don't have to go for a full shell like this to achieve this effect. Sometimes in a smaller venue, you can do something like this where you literally just have these upright shells just to, again, focus the acoustic sound from these instruments out towards the audience. Next picture is um, from our friends at Wenger in America. You can tell it's American because we don't have quite the sort of like the uh, marching band thing happening in this country as we do for our friends in the States. But again, what you've got here is this time you've got a very reflective room brass instruments and what they're doing is trying to focus it towards the audience rather than it bounce around the room. So what we're doing with sound is we are either trying to reduce the reflection so that people could hear what's going on and so that the rooms don't get too noisy or in some cases we're trying to create that echo if you like by reflecting the sound towards the audience. The last problem is what happens when you've got noise which is coming from the building itself. Not necessarily the building making the noise, but the people using the building are creating noise, or the noise that you're creating, perhaps as a musician, is causing problems to other users of the building. So, effectively noise from next door. What's happening? have here an illustration of you got somebody trying to practice here and you've got people outside and the sound as I say it's like water it's trying to find a way through you've got vibrations in the floor you've got people upstairs walking around so the noise is coming this way and of course the person playing is also creating noise which may be disturbing other people here's another example Again, we've got so this time you've got a sound which is, it's like water, it's trying to find a way through, but you've also got noises from outside permeating. In this case, you've also perhaps got, say, air conditioning or heating units that are also generating unwanted noise. What's the cause of this? Lack of insulation. There could be holes in the structure. As I say, it's like water. It tries to find its way through. So that sometimes people say, well, why is it so noisy? We've got a pipe running between rooms. And the, you know, there's sort of like that half-inch gap around the pipe. It's coming through that way. As I say, it's like water. It will find a way through. Or we've got a common wall being shared. Both people creating different noises. It's being picked up. Service ducts within the building you know, with water and heating and all these things going on, it's all creating unwanted noise in the pipe work as well. Now, when I was putting this presentation together with my colleague, I thought, I understood most of that. It is quite straightforward, but nevertheless, all of these things being combined, you have to some, sometimes 
we're, we're called in and we have to be like detectives. We have to find where all these unwanted noises are coming from before we can find what the solution is. The ambient noise here we measured yesterday about 80 decibels. So that's actually sort of quite loud. As I said earlier, when I asked you to take the headphones off, after a while talking at above that kind of level, you're going to find your voice is going to start going like that. Most of us who were here last, last night found that by the end of the day yesterday, our voices were starting to get a bit crackly. If we look at what is ideal for various, you'll see it's considerably lower than 80 decibels. So, what are the solutions other than spending your time like this and that person that's very, 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 very happy, but they're not actually going to be taking much in? If the problem is down to lack of insulation, then the first thing is increasing the amount of insulation. That involves sometimes increasing the mass of things like windows and walls. Secondary walls, having a floating floor with insulating material between the floor and the, the, the false floor. When you have machinery generating noise, sometimes you need to look at the fixtures and the, of the plant and the machinery. Sometimes, if it's just literally bolted to the structure of the building, you may need to think about having insulating material between that machinery and the structure of the building so that it's not permeating through. And of course, by having internal structures like a sound isolating room or a soundproof room. Now then, our A team here are going to attempt before you get up, guys, I just want to give you a brief introduction. Our A team here are going to try and put together one of our rooms in 10 minutes. Now, it's not designed to be put together in 10 minutes. It's designed to be put together in two or three hours. But as you can see, they've laid everything out very, very neatly. And I don't want to make it too easy for them, so I'm going to move that one <laughs> over here. <laughs> And this one over here. <laughs> so I'd like to introduce my three colleagues and we're going to give them 10 minutes to see if they can put this together. At the end of it, my technical colleague, rather than the dummy himself, will answer any questions that you may have. You will also have an opportunity to come to our stand, to discuss things and try out our booths. So let's give them a 10 minute countdown. Very, very James Bond, if you guys like to come up. And the clock is ticking, come on. As you can see, this product is a modular product. The panels go together and then these insulating pieces of timber with insulating material between them slots down in between but it goes down like that it goes together some people said some person said yes it's like lego and that's not a bad description uh, the cost of these compared with our with our classic music factory where prices start from about ten thousand pounds that includes insulation the prices for these start about three three and a half thousand and that design, as I say, to be put together yourself. Right, so the first level goes in. Not bad. I will hasten to add, these are highly trained professionals, and that door is incredibly heavy. If you are going to use something like this, first of all, be aware that it's going to arrive on a forklift or a tail lift truck. It's not the sort of thing you can sort of like say, I'll oh, just pop it on the front, you know, outside the garage. It is going to be a heavy thing. 
and the door itself needs at least two, preferably three or four people to live. Going back to what we were saying earlier, the way that these things work very often is to increase the mass. And so you can have, to a certain extent, lightweight materials, but if you're actually going to create the environment where you're going to be reducing and isolating, you do need to have, hold the doors up. Right guys, seven. Oh, they've, they've just found the one I moved. Ain't I a stinker? Right, how are we doing for time? Seven and a half minutes to go. I think they've been practicing too much. Tell me to ask a very interesting question, what size is these coming? As you can see, because it is a modular system, it can be made wider and deeper to what you need. So it doesn't have to. I mean, this one here is obviously designed for like a vocal booth or a single practice. Uh, these are also designed to be used for recording as well. The space here, where the electrics go through can also take sound cables as well. So you can use them for say single practice or you can use them for recording as well. Not in this one, but you can in a, in a larger one. Let's say what you would do is you would say, right, I need one and I need to be able to get an upright piano in there, for example. One of the, one of the advantages of this is that you can actually build it around the piano. You don't have to build it and then wonder how you're going to get the piano in. You can build it around the piano. OK, guys, coming up to six minutes to go. As you can see, some of these panels are quite heavy. It's better that you have two people to use to, to manhandle them. Another question. Yes. Um, I, I need to sort of sit, sit in the floor plan for that, but what, what we could do is the, we would take that as an inquiry, work it out, and then come back with sketches and say, right, okay, to fit this, we would need you know this this size, and then, then we'd sort of take it from there. Oh yes, you can. Somebody asked if you could put these in a garage. That's a very good question. Yeah. These are designed to go within a structure. These are not... You couldn't put this together and leave it outside in the rain. That's all it's designed for. It's a room within a room. But that means it can go in a garage, in a shed, and in a home. One of the problems that we had with our original music, classic music practice room, is that whilst it's very, very good for educational establishments, it was too heavy to go into domestic places. You know, if you had it upstairs in the bedroom one day, you could quite happily find it in your living room which is not ideal. It'd be like Steptoe coming through in the bath. No, you'd need to have an... Uh, somebody asked, can we have them just outside? No, they're not designed for that. They're designed to go within a, in a structure, so you'd have to have a shed or a garage first. I think. But they will, yes. Right, four minutes to go, guys. They're doing far too well. It makes you want to hide a bit, doesn't it? Now, we do have a friend here today, a very, very good saxophonist, who is going to demonstrate the booth when it's finished. Hopefully in about three and a half minutes. 
I think this might end up like a James Bond film, down to the last three seconds, red wire, green wire, which one do they cut? I did say to them, don't do it in seven minutes, will you? Because otherwise it'll be boring, there'll be no theatre, but um, I don't think there's any chance of that at the moment. Okay, coming up to three minutes to go. Saxophonist is warming up. While the first part of the, uh, the roof goes on, slots into place. Right, two and a half minutes to go. Right, now in a room like this, it will get very uncomfortable very quickly if you're in there for a few weeks. You need to recirculate the air. So it comes with a small unit that draws air out, and then it comes in through another vent so that the air is replaced every four to five minutes. Very important, in, you know, otherwise it's going to get very stuffy in there very, very quickly. It's not airtight, we were talking earlier about putting our students in a vacuum. <laughs> but you don't want some, somebody in there sort of like, you know, ready to give their vocal performance on a recording and be like... <laughs> so we do recirculate the air. That unit's now gone in. Now we're putting in some absorptive materials. Because they're hard surfaces, there. I'm going to have absorptive materials so we don't get echoes within that small space. I'll just walk very slowly. I love that. <laughs> oh, time's gone off. We are done, ladies and gentlemen. Right, we should now like to ask our saxophonist to demonstrate. So, first of all, There you go, with the high ambient noise out here, you, that sound's almost disappeared. Is he still playing? <laughs> you won't stop him now. All right, okay. <laughs> but such a talent, let's listen to him a little bit more. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thanks very much.